Oh, hello once again. Right. It is time. I have a burning question and uh, a topic that I have been mulling over for some time. And I, I am here to present it to you today and ask maybe get your input in the comment section down below. How do you build your characters? What is your character creation process? Not how to make a character, although we will be going over some uh, character builds that I put together and then uh, putting into practice my thoughts. But what is your process for creating your character? Do you come up with a name first? Do you come up with a style first? Do you find character art? Do you have a build? Do you pick a class? What is the first thing you do when you're presented with the question of what do I want to play in this campaign? I have a theory that we're going to talk about here. What is your character creation process? This is my tabletop talk. Slideshow that I put together here. So hopefully it will keep me on track and I don't ramble uh, too much. All right. So as we said, this is the topic. It's not how you create your character, but how do you specifically make their characters? There's three ways that I've come up to tackle the process. And I'm trying to find out, is it a take two, fill the last one system? And the other thing is... I'm not infallible, I'm just a single person. I want to see maybe what I have gone wrong or what I've missed, even. That's what I want to find out today. The purpose of this video is to go over this topic and present you with my thoughts and try to see maybe if I'm onto something or I'm, maybe I'm missing a piece of the puzzle that you can fill me in on. So, these are the three pillars that I have come up with. Where do you start with your character? Do you start with the mechanics? Do you start with the concept? Or do you have a story in mind when coming into uh, the going to the table, coming into the character? So there's some examples on the screen here. So with mechanics, do you want to play an orc? Do you want to be a fighter? Do you want to be a wizard? Do you want to be specifically a divination wizard? Do you want to be a divination wizard that's a dwarf? Do you does does all of that not matter until you know what stats you're going to use or what the party composition is? Maybe the the party that you're joining has already been established for some time and they require a healer. Does is that going to determine what kind of character you play or does that not matter at all? Other times it's a con concept, so a reference from outside media. Do you want to play uh, a hero from a comic book or a show? Do you want to emulate a character and somehow embody that into your 5th edition character? Or is it something completely different? Like you want to play uh, the stalwart noble or um, a gambler down on his luck? that needs to find money to pay off a, a broker or something like that. So is it the concept that matters to you? And then you can fill in some of the other details. Maybe your your class comes next or the rest of the story comes next, but you're, you want to play a superhero and, and then the rest of that can be built around the idea. And finally, we have the story. Is it particular life events, a goal, a dream, an aspiration, a particular trauma or hardships? Is it a particular organization? Are you part of a, a guild or a, um, um, a, a band of thugs, a group of orphans? Or maybe it's something you find in the world. The DM has presented you with a, um, a particular event and you want to be a part of it. Um, say mages are, are being prosecuted, so you want to play a wizard in that setting. Is that what is going to interest you in making? Um, so these are the three sort of building blocks that I have. And is it a take two and fill one? Do you have a concept and want to play a particular class and then fill in the story afterwards? Or have a particular story plot in mind and want to play a particular race and then you come up with the concept afterwards? 
um, more like a priority system where obviously you're going to you're going to fill everything together. But which which is the piece that you start with? That is what I want to know. And here we go. The take two fill. one. We've kind of already talked about this. Is it that simple or am I missing something? Is it really a jest you take two of those and you fill the last one? That's sort of how I build my character. I come up with a certain feature or uh, a particular event, and then I can fill in what, what matters after. And it's the same thing with e even individually in those sections. Do I choose a background and then decide how I got that background? Or do I choose a class or a subclass and then just fill in whatever race would go along with it? That's what we're going to look at. So to put this into practice, uh, we're going to build two D&D characters that are based off my cats. My two lovely cats. Uh, now you could say that we are starting with the concept first because we're making my cats as D and D five E characters, uh, but we're going to ignore that aspect for this process because we're we're going to be using more um, targeted examples for our three pillar system. So rather than just say, okay, I have the concept for both of these already, so that I'm already focusing on the concept, uh, we kind of do anyway. But um, we're going to ignore that part for now. So this is. OJ, my my poor derpy boy, and his name is Orangey Jusu, because he is an orange juice cat. Orange. <laughs> that is its own whole story. But with a name like Orangey Jusu, he must be a samurai fighter. Uh, we're going to be a frontline tank. We want to focus on the three main stats, strength, con, dex. For the race, we have three main options because we want him to be a Catman, uh, Tabaxi, Leonin, and Shifter. So, looking at the options here and building the character, I have decided to go with the Beast Hide Shifter specifically for the stats and and the uh, the stats that the, the race gives us, which we'll see in just a moment. And uh, we're going to use the standard array just for ease of use. Um, now, obviously, if we are rolling stats, they could be vastly different. If we are looking at uh, a point by system, it's a little more flexible, but you can get the standard array with the point by system anyways. So you could specialize it a little bit further, but I kind of like uh, for just ease of use, um, standard array fits, fits perfectly. So here we go. Standard array, 15 in strength, 14 dex, 13 con, 8 in intelligence, 12 in wisdom, 10 in charisma. Um, so this is a little bit because he's our dorpy boy. Uh, he's a little bit of a, a, a special case. He skips out on school a lot, so he has an eight strength or an, an eight intelligence. Um, top priority strength, uh, fourteen in dex is probably the most that we're going to need for him um, because he's mostly going to be a heavy armor fighter. Or if we're going to put him in medium armor, fourteen gives us our plus two. Perfect, we're done. Uh, for beast hide, we get plus two to con, plus one to strength. So that's going to basically put us at a um, uh, respectable range there. Our strength is going to go up. Our con is going to go up. Perfect. Uh, the main reason for the shifter is the shifting feature here. That we can see as a bonus action, you assume a more bestial form. It lasts for a minute. It reverts back if I uh, if I die or uh, change my form. You gain temporary hit points equal to your level plus your constitution modifier. And then uh, it, you get an additional bonus based on what type you are. With Beast Hide, we get an extra D6 of temporary hit points and plus one to armor class. We also pick up athletics as a, uh, a natural um, skill and we have dark vision. All great stuff. So the main draw to this one here is that uh, for one instance, we get a bunch of temporary hit points, uh, a D6 plus your level plus um, your con mod. So at level one, it's going to be, you know, one plus your con constitution, which at this point is going to be like a 15. So we'll get, um, you know, three from there plus a D6. Huge, huge at level one. And athletics is never bad. We have two paths for the build um, with this type of fighter. Uh, you have to decide your fighting style at level one. So we have to pick sort of what sort of train we're going to go into. Are we going to be a one hand and shield fighter? Are we going to be a two handed fighter or are we going to be something else? Um, so my my top picks for this build is going to be dueling. Um, so while you have a melee weapon in one hand and no weapon in the other hand, you do plus two your, to your damage. Uh, you could go with the great hand or the 
great weapon fighting. So if you're using two hands and you try to hit somebody, uh, if you roll a one or a two, you can re-roll the damage. So it makes your average damage a little bit nicer. Um, if you don't know and you don't want to decide, pick defense. You get a plus one to your armor class. You're going to be a frontline guy either way. Perfect. Uh, for this, for this, we are going to go and, and note this can be changed at level four. So. If you know that this is going to be a campaign that goes on for a little while, you can make a choice now, see how it feels, and then change it later on. So, very cool thing from Tasha's. We're going to pick dueling because I want to be a one-hand sword and shield person. Um, so we're going to be focusing on the mechanics and sort of the concept. So we want to be a Catman Samurai. Uh, so we've decided on our class and our, and our um, uh, subclass already. We're not even level three yet at this moment, but we already know we're going to go into samurai. So our background and our story can be filled as needed. So for this, we've already got athletics for being a shifter. We pick the knight background that you can see there. We're going to pick up history and persuasion. Uh, we're going to get a, a two proficiency and an extra language as well as two uh, proficiencies that we get from the fighter class that are not athletics or that I get from my background. So we're going to choose insight and perception. So that kind of helps him round him out a little bit further. For equipment, we just took the basic stuff, uh, a long sword and a shield with heavy armor. We're going to reflavor the uh, the long sword to be a katana or some type of, um, you know, samurai weapon, something that would fit him a little bit more. Um, so for our attack, we're going to have a plus five to hit with the, the stats that we have on board. Uh, we're going to do a D8 plus 5. So that's going to be 3 from the Strength mod, 2 from the um, uh, Dueling Fighting Style. Uh, so we're going to do a heaps, heap, heaps and heaps of damage if we hit with that plus 5. Um, so for our socials, we have a decent Persuasion. We have a plus 2. We have a 3 to Insight and a 3 Perception. So that helps in the non-combat scenarios where we might be able to present uh, Orenji as, you know, a... Not real familiar with the world, but, you know, he at least has some some skills to get by. He's not going to be, um, you know, ripped off by uh, random strangers on the street with percept with uh, the insight. And then he's going to notice some dangers ahead of time with the perception. Great. I can see our Saturday at the bottom there. So with everything all, all told, we got a 16 in strength, a 15 in constitution. Uh, and then the rest of our stats are just, you know, present. Again, combat shifting, we're going to get the D6 plus the level, temporary hit points with one AC. Uh, from fighter, we are going to get the second wind feature, which is going to give us a, a D10 plus fighter level of healing. And then our base HC is going to be 18. That's the uh, chain mail armor with the shield and 12 hit points. All right, so now we're going to jump right up to level three. Um, so whatever happens, whatever the story is, these are the new features that we get to pick up. We get our action, action surge, which all fighters get, which, uh, we can basically on our turn, take another action. So we get to attack twice. It should we so choose or, uh, attack and do the dodge action or do dashes and attacks, whatever we need to do. Um, that, that opens us up to a lot of options here. We're going to pick the samurai fighter, which gives us a bonus skill, uh, a bonus, uh, proficiency, uh, which gives us performance. So he can do a little bit of a uh, a show with his um, uh, fighting. That's basically what he gets by default. And then he also picks up the fighting spirit skill. So as a bonus action, um, he can focus himself to make advantage with his weapon attacks and then on his current turn and then gain five extra temporary hit points. So temporary hit points do not stack. So from the shifting and from the samurai fighting, uh, they cannot layer on top of one another. But uh, if we shift first and then we lose those temporary hit points, we can then use the fighting spirit to gain more temporary hit points. So that's going to make us very, very tanky. So you can see at level three, we're going to have 28 hit points as well. So at this point, we get one time where we can shift, which is going to be a D6 plus our con modifier of two plus our level of three. So it's a D6 plus five, maxing out, you know, between six and 11 temporary hit points. And then we get to use this feature, the Spiting Spirit, three times. So we have any way up between six and 11 and then an extra 15 on top of this 28. So you can see that if you're in a particularly long drawn out battle, he's going to be able to keep himself up without really necessarily relying on a healer or a cleric to keep up. And then 
as a bonus action, you can also then use your uh, your second wind to regain uh, a D8 plus three normal hit points as well. So lots of stuff that you're going to be able to use that bonus action for. All right, jumping to level five. This is where we're, we're going to get a little juicy. At level four, we get our ability score improvement. So you have the option to take a feat, as this is assuming your DMs allow feats, because feats are great. I don't know why they would not allow you to have feats. But uh, if not, then you would take your ability score increase. Um, my recommendation would either be to, you know, bump your strength up by two so that you have that better accuracy of damage or uh, split it, uh, get your, your constitution up that extra point so that you're a little bit hardier uh, and then put more into strength so that you can top that up later on. Um, but feats are great. I love feats. We're going to play with feats because that's what makes characters cool. Um, so you have the choice now. If you went the two-handed sword build, or because you're level four and Tasha's, you're able to change your fighting style, you can reposition into either of these. If you want to get, um, you know, a, a two-handed sword, you would go with Great Weapon Master in this particular build. Uh, the reason being, Great Weapon Master gives you that secondary option. Uh, when you decide to make an attack, you can do so with a negative five. Uh, to get the plus 10 damage, uh, you have on tap uh, your advantage attacks. So you can choose to use your bonus action to use your fighting spirit, get advantage on the attack, take the minus 5, get a roll the 2d20s, and hopefully get a hit. Um, that gives you better accuracy, so the accuracy that you've lost now gets a little bit higher. So that is more if you want to go with the damage build. Maybe there's like another barbarian in the party, or you have a paladin or a cleric that is frontlining as well. I'm dropping stuff. Maybe you're, you have that taken care of already and your team needs more damage. Uh, then you can always go with the Great Weapon Master, take a two-hand sword, uh, reflavor it as whatever two-hand sword that you like, or maybe a pull arm, whatever, whatever flavor that you want. Two-handed weapon doesn't matter. Uh, but then you can change that fighting style over the Great Weapon Master and then do heaps and heaps of damage. Uh, but for this one, we're sticking with the shield. In the one hand, we want Shield Master. Uh, the reason being for this, if you, when you take the attack action, it gives you a bonus action shove, so you can push enemies around or knock them down to the ground. Um, while you're not incapacitated, you can add your shield to the dexterity saving throws, which is amazing. Um, and then uh, when you are subjected to a dexterity saving throw that only affects you, uh, and you're going to take half damage, you can use your reaction to take no damage. So very tanky options. We have now something we can always do with our bonus action if we're attacking. Um, we have a bit of extra uh, dexterity bonus because we don't we aren't proficient in it, uh, but we could add that shield to our uh, our deck saves, which is huge, which is great. We now have 44 hit points, and as said, all of those healing abilities now also increase. You know, we're a higher level, that's going to go up. We also have extra attacks, and now we have two attacks instead of one. So what you could do then is use your bonus action to have uh, advantage on your attacks, get a little bit more health, do two attacks, decide to action surge, do four attacks with advantage. That's why um, the, the Great Weapon Master is uh, very huge in this type of uh, build. Because if you can do four attacks with advantage with the minus five, I mean, you're doing insane amounts of damage. Uh, but even with our one-handed option, you know, we're uh, a D6 plus five, or D8 plus five, and you're doing that four times, you know, it's, it's going to chew through a lot, of, uh, a lot of your enemies' hit points. All right, so we're we're jumping up to uh, we're multi-classing Barb. We're stopping at level eight in this build. Uh, you can continue to go on farther, but we're we're gonna multi-class into Barbarian. We're gonna stop at level eight. So this is what we end up with. We get to pick up the um, the the Rage feature at level one. Uh, we get the unarmored armored defense. So this is one level of Barbarian on top of this. So now we're level six. We get the higher hit dice, so we're up to, to 53 hit point. We have two uh, rages. Our rage damage is two. Uh, we get the unarmored defense, but we're going to wear armor anyways, but that's always an option for us as well. Uh, there's always those roleplay scenarios where you might end up being imprisoned or, you know, the you, you wake up naked in the woods. Cool, you have a bit of armor. Um, the big benefit of the rage uh, is the you have resistance to bludgeoning, piercing, slashing damage. Uh, so we have now resistance. And this effectively doubles our hit points when it comes along with um, uh, physical confrontations. Um, so magical damage, all of the elemental damage, that still hurts like normal. Uh, but if we're going to get into a fist fight with, uh, you know, a, a hill giant, orange is going to be amazing. 
Uh, that being said, on top of this, you have to remember all that temporary hit points that we have. So it's a D6 plus 8 uh, when we shift. Uh, we get the extra 15, the three fives that we can layer on there. It, that is doubled because when we're taking this half damage. So you can run into a squad of goblins, rage, and then next turn shift, and you have that big buffer of, of temp hit points that they are not going to be able to get through very quickly unless they have wizards or backup or something else. But it's assuming just physical damage, you can double the amount. That's basically 10 extra hit points of damage on each of the, the theories. And then, you know, at the very minimum, nine on the, um, on the shifting. We continue on. We're going to jump to level eight. So this is going to be three levels in Barbarian. So we're going to be fifth level uh, Samurai Fighter, three levels of Barbarian. We're going with, of course, Totem of the Bear. Uh, so we get Reckless Attack at level 2, we get Danger Sense at level 2, which is excellent. Uh, we get advantage on Dexterity Saving Throws against traps and attacks that we can see, uh, spells and other things. Uh, reckless Attack, we can decide to gain advantage on our attacks, so in those moments where we, we already have uh, temporary hit points, but you really, really, really want to hit this guy, uh, you can use your Reckless Attack, uh, but just know that they are going to have advantage when attacking you back, so it will make your defenses lower. So, but if you're already raging, it might not really matter if you're fighting a melee guy anyway. Um, so, give and take. Um, at the third level, we can rage three times. We gain primal knowledge, so that's going to help our intimidation. Uh, we are going to get the spirit seek. Or so we, we take the spirit path. We're going to take the bear spirit. Um, so we can cast uh, beast sense and speak with animals, but only as ritual. So that's kind of kind of a cool situation, maybe you know, story wise, whatever it comes to. Uh, maybe now Orange, you can talk to House Scouts. That'd be great. Um, we are going Bear because that gives us resistance to all damage except Psychic. So that means if you are going to go and punch a wizard, uh, his fireball is not going to hurt you so much. Um, or like any any other type of elemental damage, if you want to go swimming in acid or something, you know, that will help you. Um, so, conclusion. In battle, we can rage, take half damage from everything but psychic. We can shift for a d6 plus 10 temporary hit points. Our fighting style gives us five temporary hit points that we can use three times. Second wind for a d10 plus five, healing as well. Not to mention advantage on deck saves. And uh, if we take no damage on a success from shield master, this gives the orange menace a lot of staying power with 71 hit points. Offensively, uh, while raging, we do a d8 plus 7 per hit and can choose to attack with advantage three times with fighting style and indefinitely with reckless attack. With half plate armor and shifted, you have a 20 AC with no magical item. So this is a very cool build, in my opinion. Uh, even at low levels, you'll at, as soon as you hit level 3, you will feel that momentum. Um, and your your party cleric or bard or druid will love you because they don't need to take care of you so much. Um, now it depends on the setting, of course, with everything. If you're in a role play heavy or in an intrigue campaign, uh, he's not going to contribute a whole lot to that. Uh, but he does have some mental stats and wisdom. Uh, he does have those uh, perception and insight, so at least he'll be able to contribute to the conversation that way. Uh, but one thing that you've noticed, we haven't talked about his story at all. That's because with this one, we're focusing on the mechanics. This is a mechanics build. We want to be able to get those temporary hit points. We want to be able to um, do battle. We want to be able to fight and be able to survive. And this, I feel like this build is very good at that. So this is Orenji. Now, this is Shelly, the dark one. So for Shelly, we're going to be taking a different approach. We're going to be focusing on the story of this character and filling the mechanics. She is the sister of OJ Orenji. She was chosen by the elders to learn their hidden ways, and is a skilled prodigy earning respect and titles. Uh, the, the two cats grew up in a small community that is nestled in the forest, far away from many other societies. 
uh, being beast folk, maybe in the setting they weren't uh, accepted or uh, were just determined to be mysterious. So they kept to themselves away, stayed in their own communities, but learned ancient arts of fighting and battle. Renji was not a, a good student, uh, very distracted by um, things around, environments. He wasn't a good student, and the masters didn't particularly care to train him. Uh, but it was a very different experience. Really. He was um, picking up on the, the arts at an extraordinary level and was much more clever than the noble or that the elders had given her credit. She cares very deeply for, for Renji, but uh, he is a bit of a um, bit of a derp. He likes to look at the flowers and chase the butterflies. Um, not not as studious or as um, committed to the clan or the cause. He has a bit of wanderlust that the um, uh, elders uh, shy away from. He wants to go out into the world and make a name for himself where, you know, they want to stay and honor their traditions in the forest away from everyone else. So, with this in mind, still a cat person. <laughs> so we need to choose from the listing the, the tabaxi nature in this, in this case. Um, but the great thing is, with your stat array and with the story that we've just determined, you could be anything. In my mind, the physicality is different for Shelly here. She's nimble, she's fast, she's quick, uh, quick-witted. So we went with lower strength, um, lean dancer fighter type. Baxi's naturally get a plus two to dex and a plus one to charisma. So in this uh, scenario, uh, we are putting our constitution a little bit lower, um, putting our wisdom at 14, our charisma at 13, which is going to bump it up to 14 once we're done. And then uh, intelligence sort of at the average human level at a, at a 10. Um, because the Baxi's have dark vision, uh, we have cat's talent. So we're already getting um, the proficiency in perception and in stealth. Uh, there, we have claws that we can utilize for unarmed combat, a climbing speed, and uh, a burst of agility. We can have the zoomies for a moment and uh, basically double our walk speed uh, on tap, and then we can use it again once we have not moved for a turn. That's the tabaxi. So with this array and the race choices, we're wide open on options. Exactly what I was saying. Uh, the elders could be monks, rangers, fighters, rogues, heck, even bards. Uh, with a high deck score, the dark one is very fast and nimble, having the option to gain the zoomies for double speed. No joke, either. Um, with this, we can fill a missing role. We could even, we could be a, a cleric, we could be a, um, bard, druid, um, any of those fighter classes that so we're pretty wide open. We can fill whatever the party needs, but still stay true to the core story of this particular character. In this instance, we're going to choose Monk, um, but with a little bit of a twist. Uh, the Dark One is granted claws from her racial ability 1d4 plus strength instead of the normal unarmed strike, and we'll be using this as the monks with the monks, monks martial arts to use dex and keep the slashing damage. Uh, the Monk's Martial Arts is going to be coming up here shortly. Uh, for no reason beyond flavor, we're going to go with the Folk Hero, uh, being known as the Dark One to her people. Uh, she is known for her, her unparalleled skill with speed and claw. The Folk Hero, we pick up Animal Handling, we get Survival, we get Cooks Utensils. All very useful um, exploration needs. Alright, level 1. This is Monk. Martial Arts. Big TLDR. We can uh, make our punches for a D4 damage using unarmed strike or monk weapons. Uh, we can use dexterity instead of strength for our unarmed attacks. Uh, when I use the attack action, I can use an unarmed attack as a bonus action. Uh, if I haven't already taken a bonus. Um, I can... And then you can reflavor whatever you need. 
Um, so we, we're going with regular class equipment. We're going to go with a, a short sword and explorer's pack. We're going to pick up cook's utensil, utensils for the background. We got some darts. We pick up acrobatics and insight. Uh, we have unarmored defense. So with not wearing any armor, we have a 15 armor class, 9 hit points. Great. Level 1 monk. Uh, with slick stats, numerous proficiencies, she could be a hero in her own right. But she cares for her simple brother, who is often getting into trouble. She leaves the village with him to make sure that he would be safe, and is being being more insightful and aware. She has more, uh, far more skills than battle. And we can see with the the two that we picked up from our, just being a tabaxi, uh, the two skills that we got for being a tabaxi, the two skills that we got from our background, and the two skills that we got for be, uh, for our our class, we have a ton of, of proficiencies. Um, we, we picked up acrobatics, animal handling, insight, perception, stealth, and survival, which we do also have like middling stats and our charisma as well. So we, we are pretty good at our conversational pieces. Uh, we're still good at medicine, intimidation, deception. We've got a good sleight of hand, persuasion and performance, um, with really the only negative being athletics, but being more acrobatic instead. We can see that while Orenji was all about the the fighting, the the surviving, um, she is very much more geared to the other pillars of five fifth edition play. Jumping to level three, boom, we get key, which is like strange forces that we can pull from from ourselves to do the various things on the right hand side of the screen. Patient defense, the, the step of the wind, the flurry of blows. We have the dedicated weapon that we get as well. So we can choose a weapon to, as long as we're proficient with it and it isn't heavy or special, we can make that our um, monk weapon. Uh, we have unarmored movement. So we're zoom we got the, the zoomies are extra zoomy. We have a 40 movement speed now. Uh, we had the 15 in armor class and the 15 hit points. We're just taking the average on all of these builds because you can roll, but... Um, we're just going to go with the average to see what we would end up with on a standard base. Same with the, the, the stat, array, stat array. So with this one, we can uh, we now have key. We make claw attacks. We can do one slash as a attack action. Do two slashes as your flurry of blows. Um, we can decide to get the zoomies and then have a 80 movement speed and then double it again with a step of the wind bonus action key. So we can zip 160 feet and then still have our attack action to impale whatever is that far away. Beautiful. Level three. Uh, we're gonna be, we're gonna get deflect missiles. We're gonna get the key field strikes. Uh, and the, again, the subclass doesn't matter. We can be an open hand. We could be a Kensai. We could be, um, I wouldn't really go with drunk in this one, but you could be, well, sure, maybe leaving the village, the libations, um, she really gets into the uh, the substances. <laughs> but for this one, we're going to go with Mercy, the Way of Mercy. Uh, and the two main features that we get on the side. So uh, we get the, the Mystic Touch, so we can use a, a key point to punch somebody and make them feel better. Um, so it's going to be your Martial Arts Dice plus your Wisdom Modifier, which is a T4 plus 2. Uh, we also have the way of harm, so we can spend a key point to do an extra damage of necrotic, which is equal to the d4 plus 2. Uh, we also pick up two more skill proficiencies. So we had six before, now we have eight. <laughs> we pick up insight and medicine, as well as the herbalism toolkit. Jumping to level five, we have slow fall, we have quickened healing, we have, we're at level four, we're going to take the slasher feet. We're using the claws, the slashing attacks. So slasher feet gives us the plus one to dex, which bumps us up to 18. Once per turn, when you hit a creature with an attack that deals slashing damage, you can reduce their movement speed by 10 feet. Then if you score a critical strike on slashing damage, you wound them. They, they have disadvantage in all of their attacks. Excellent. Level five, extra attack, stunning strike, focused aim. Those are all on screen. Please pause if I'm going too quickly. If you want to read them, do so. So, number class 16, HP 33, movement speed 40, slash your feet. They are going to lose 10 foot of movement. The one thing that we can do now, we have two, two attacks. 
uh, as our main action. Uh, one attack with martial arts as a bonus, or two attacks if we use Flurry of Blows. If we use Flurry of Blows, we can also heal our teammates as one of those punches instead. Um, but the cool thing we could do with the Slasher Feet, we're reducing their movement speed by 10 feet when we hit them. If I use my bonus action to disengage with the Step of the Winds, I can attack one target, double my movement speed, leave them, attack another target, and then continue my run, my 80 feet of movement. And that might prevent, depending on the scenario, that might prevent them from reaching your team because a normal person has 30 feet of movement. You've now reduced it to 20 feet. And now if, if you still end your turn more than 20 feet away from those two targets, they can't catch you. They're either going to have to do the dash action or they're going to have to use ranged attacks on you. And if they use ranged attacks on you, you can use your deflect missiles that we got at level three to catch one of the bolts. Cool. Finishing off the build at level eight. Same with Arenji. We're going to have the key powered strike. So we're now punching and slashing with magical damage or overcoming magical resistances. Uh, we get an extra 15 feet of movement. For our uh, or now our no, sorry, we get an extra five feet of movement. Our unarmed room movement gets bumped up to fifteen instead, instead of the ten it was. While we're not wearing armor or shield, we get physician's touch, which means that when we use that uh, way of healing punch, the hand of healing feature, we can also end a disease or one of the conditions: the blinded, deafened, paralyzed, poisoned, or stunned. And you use the hand of harm, you give them the poisoned condition. That could be very good if you are like uh, a Zumi healer. You can run around the battlefield. Your uh, your um, wizard in the back line got hit by a hold person. You can run on over and remove that paralysis from him. Give him a little bit of hit points too. Level 7, we pick up evasion and stillness of mind, so we can end a charm or frightened effect on ourselves as an action. At level 8, we pick up a feat. We're going to pick mobile. We now get an extra 10 feet of movement. We can dash over difficult terrain, and when we make an attack on somebody, they do not get opportunity attacks on us, whether we hit or not. So this further expands on our option. When we were um, running around and trying to slash people to reduce their movement speed, now we can do, we don't need to take a bonus action disengage for that particular feature. We can just zoom zoom over. We can hit two people with our action. We can hit two people with our bonus action if we flurry of blows, which could also be a healing punch. So we could hit three enemies and then run over to the tank and give him a little love tap while those other three targets, assuming we hit, of course. Uh, are now slowed as they're walking towards. So that gives us some battlefield manipulation. This is not a, a heavy hitter. This is not a, uh, I'm not going to de defeat uh, uh, Lich Kings by themselves just by hitting them to death. The damage on it's fairly low, but there's so much utility that you get out of this, out of this character. A lot of options moving around and reducing movement speeds gives you some battlefield control. And the amount of skill and tool proficiencies just make it a cool character out of combat. Which is our conclusion. The Dark One is a versatile skirmisher, uh, being able to close gaps in close combat quickly, hinders foes' movements, as well as being able to be a medic, one that is needed from anywhere on the battlefield. 110 movement speed when we use the Tabaxi feature with our 55 movement. You can be anywhere you need to be. Moreover, she's capable of tracking, communication, knowledge, uh, skills with tools for travel, food and medicine, and training with operating mounts and handling them. Uh, she cares about the health and safety of her traveling companions, uh, while not the most devastating on the field, can sway the course of the battle in more ways. You can see here our skills on the side. We are very good at so many things. We, we've got the, le the vehicle land proficiencies. We're good with cook utensils and, and uh, herbalism kits. So you'll be able to make meals for your companions. You'll be able to make sure that they're eating right. You have uh, options for making medicines or potentially healing potions that you could support your team in that way. So this is definitely a, a character that you could play as a motherly figure like the uh, the party mother.
uh, cares about everybody, wants to make sure that they're doing good, wants to see them succeed. While still being a very potent character themselves. What do you think? How do you make characters? Are there some similarities in the concepts that we have here with the mechanics, the concept, and the story? You can see, obviously, I love my mechanics. I I love love combat. I love mechanics. That should be evident in the sort of builds that I made. Um, I think anyone and the 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 role play options are awesome. Um, somebody that can be very very new to the game could be the best role player in the world. Um, there there might be some tips or tricks that come up in in that aspect, but knowing the game and and some of the features that come along with it, combat is the most sort of game crunchy. The rest of it is really you know the exploration parts of it, where you do use some mechanics, but it's mostly skills based. Uh, role play is really just you as a person, how you would interact with other people. So what do you do differently? I really want to know. This is this is my my concept and my idea on how do you get through each of these. But I want to know what you guys do. Let me know in the comments. Am I onto something here? Am I missing something? I really want to know. Aha. You're here. <laughs> Thank you for listening to my my rambling. Um I really I this is a thought process for me and I really want to know what you guys think. So please feel leave me a comment i will read them all uh we will have some other concept things that will come up here probably some shorter videos this one is a bit on the length side but we had a lot to go over so i appreciate you watching to the end if you're still here consider uh liking the video leaving a comment comment is the most important if you do nothing else that will make me happy subscribe if you want to see some more uh i do have a twitch twitch.tv slash um, and that is where I will be hanging out more often than but we're going to put out a series of other videos and character builds and monster builds. So thank you again for watching. Let's have a great day.